Hi there, thanks for joining me today. My name's Liz Horvath. I'm the president and founder of Hale Health and Safety Solutions, and I am on a mission to make work a great part of life for as many people as possible. Now, if you are a workplace leader or an aspiring workplace leader, I think you'll find today's message really helpful. We're going to be talking about motivation, how to motivate your team members or your employees. Now, the first thing to think about when you're thinking about motivation is we're trying to motivate people to be successful in the workplace. We want them to meet the goals and the objectives that the organization has set out for them, right? Well, I want you to take a few minutes and think back to a time when you were really motivated to do something. Did someone else put that motivation into you? Or did that come from within? You see, most of the time motivation comes from within and it's usually because of two things, one of two things, or maybe even both. Either we are discontent with a situation that we have found ourselves in, um, and we have a desire, a desire for something better or to make the situation better. So discontent and desire, these are the things that tend to move us forward. These are the things that tend to put that motivation within our hearts. And as I said, that motivation can only come from within. We see it with things like quitting smoking or losing weight or starting to exercise more or learning a new language or you know, saving up the money to put your kids through college or going to college or university yourself. I mean, there's so many things that we know that we have motivation for. Um, so why is it that when we're looking at the workplace and we're trying to figure out how to motivate our employees, we think that we can motivate them from the outside in, that putting those goals and objectives in front of them is going to be the motivation or saying, okay, well, you do this and we will reward you with this. And now I'm not saying that we shouldn't do that because we absolutely should. Employees do need to be rewarded for the good work and the good effort that they put in. And we do need to align the employees' goals and objectives, the professional goals and objectives, with the goals and objectives of the organization. It is absolutely critical to do that. But here's where um, some workplace uh, leaders and some organizations tend to fall short. And this is going to make a big difference in your ability to have a really successful team. You see, because motivation comes from within, as a workplace leader, you need to inspire motivation within your team members, within your employees. And you do that by really treating them like a human being. Now, you may be wondering, well, how do we do that within a workplace setting? And, and here's the thing. What we have found um, over the years is that when we treat employees with respect, um, they tend to trust us. And when employees trust us, and they trust that we're going to do what we say and they trust that this is a great place to work um, and that my leader is going to have my back, then they're going to be more inspired to do things. Um, they're gonna be more loyal. But in order to inspire the actual motivation, the leader has to connect the employee's internal motivation with the, motivate, with the goals and objectives of the company. It's not necessarily um, an easy thing to do, but it is a simple thing to do. And there's certainly ways to do it and there's ways not to do it. I mean, you can completely knock the wind out of your employee's sails if you treat them with disrespect or you try and pry into their personal life um, or you don't take care of a situation in the workplace that really needs to be taken care of. I mean, I'm talking about toxic situations, for example. If the employees are coming to a toxic situation, they are not going to be motivated, even if they're not the ones directly involved, because um, a toxic situation just affects everybody. So how do you actually inspire motivation in your employees? So I'm gonna give you five points 
here and um, you might want to jot these down and see kind of where you are with doing these uh, five points with your employees um, and you can also use them uh, with your other team members and certainly apply them to yourself as well as a leader because your own motivation also comes from within so the first point with employees and team members is to talk to them treat them like a human being uh, find out what their interests are, what, what those things are that are motivating them to want to come to work every day. And if they can't come up with something that really motivates them to come to work every day, then you might want to actually explore with them um, what their, their personal motivations are so that you can help them to build up on those and connect those with the goals and objectives of the organization. I'll give you an example. Um, if an employee is coming to work because they want to put their kids through college, that's their personal motivation. Their personal motivation, of course, is linked to the amount of money that they're making. It may not be linked to the job, the actual job that they're doing. They may not love their job, but they want to put their kids through college. So having that job and doing a really good uh, doing a good job so that they have opportunity for advancement or opportunity for bonuses and things like that may be very important to them. So somehow you want to connect the employee's heart motivation with what the motivation of the organization is. Um, a second thing that you might want to do is look at how to build uh, personal motivation into the performance management system. So when you're looking at um, an employee's performance, you would want to be talking to them all, not only about the targets and the goals for the organization that they're hitting, but how well they feel about uh, their ability to hit those targets and goals that, that are personally important to them. Now, they don't have to tell you what those targets and goals are, but it's getting them to think about them and think about ways that they can um, improve their ability to meet their own personal targets and goals by meeting the organization's goals and objectives also. So that will help. Um, a third one is, and this is really important, when you are thinking about designing work um, or organizing work, um, think about the human needs of the people who are going to be doing that work. So things like security, uh, trust, um, uh, respect and dignity, uh, uh, physical needs, psychological needs. These are our human needs at work and you can find those in the National Standard of Canada. They actually talk uh, uh, National Standard of Canada on psychological health and safety in the workplace. If you look at um, Appendix A, you will see uh, a list of, of uh, um, human needs in the workplace and what happens when those needs are met as well as what happens when those needs are not met. Um, so you can really get a good idea of as I'm designing this work, as I'm organizing this work, are there any red flags coming up that I need to be aware of that might impact um, my employees and their mental health and subsequently their level of motivation. Um, you would also want to consult with your employees about workplace factors that might impact their mental health at work and, um, and also their physical health as well. Uh, basically, you're looking at their well-being. And the reason that you want to do this is that certain workplace factors, I mean, we talked about reward, for example, so reward is one of the workplace factors. Um, but so, it, so are things like workload and balance and psychological safety and psychological support. I mean, these are things that employees uh, need to know are uh, present within the organization and that the organization is actually doing a good job of upholding them in order for them to feel good about the workplace where they're working. So as a workplace leader, you should be familiar with what those workplace factors are so that you can make sure that you're addressing those um, on a daily basis, weekly, monthly, 
um, and annually throughout the work that you are designing, organizing, and managing or directing. That will go a long way, but you need to get familiar with what they are. Again, the National Standard of Canada does a really good job of laying that out, National Standard of Canada on psychological health and safety in the workplace. Um, so you might want to download a free copy of that from, uh, from CSA Group. Uh, if you're looking for a French copy, then you can download that a French copy as well. Um, and the fifth point that I want to uh, give you that will really help is to consider the abilities and limitations and support needs of workers who may need accommodation for physical uh, or mental health needs. And again, this comes down to treating people, all people, with dignity and respect. Um, a person who has a, a physical or a mental health condition, um, what we tend to do is we, we tend to stigmatize and we tend to put them in a box and we call them them. Um, whereas they are really us. I mean, I've had times in my life when I have struggled both uh, with physical conditions as well as mental conditions. Um, I know many people who have. And as long as we keep uh, stigmatizing, then we don't really look at what the person's abilities are and we don't um, help to build that trust that will motivate that person from the inside to want to come to work to want to share, to want to, um, uh, you know, be, do a really great job. Now, I'm not saying that someone who has a mental health condition or a physical health condition isn't doing a great job, so please don't take that the wrong way. But what is really important, again, is treating that person with respect at all times and understanding what not only their limitations are, but their abilities their support needs, and in some cases, what may even trigger uh, a, a, some sort of a response. Um, so there's ways to be able to get, uh, to get that kind of information. And of course, talking with the employee is very, very important. Now, if you are a workplace leader, again, go through those uh, five points that I talked about. If you are looking for more information on that, I would love to have a conversation with you. You can click the link at the bottom of this uh, video and, uh, and contact me. I'd be happy to have a talk with you. If you're looking for training, uh, I would encourage you to visit my website, haleworkplace.com. That's hale, H-A-L-E, workplace.com. And go to the services link where you can find training, you can find um, uh, consulting services as well as um, coaching. <laughs> oh, for some reason that word just would not come to me, but uh, yeah, training, consulting, and coaching. Um, if you'd like me to come and speak at your workplace, then there's a number of topics that I also talk about. So if you are interested in uh, helping your leaders uh, or yourself as a leader to make work a great part of life for yourself and your employees, then I would love to be able to help you with that. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please uh, feel free to share it so that more people can get the information. And um, have a wonderful day. Bye for now.